Alrighty, the NBA playoffs is upon us after what was a rather hectic finish to the end of the postseason run, to the end of the regular season to get to the postseason, but here we are. So officially we have the bracket is set, and of the only games we can give are the threes against the six and the fours against the fives. And both respective conferences because while the number one and two seeds of each conference have to await the the end results of the play-in tournament games. So in the Eastern Conference, at 58-24, and 24, the Milwaukee Bucks clinched not only home court advantage throughout the Eastern Conference, but throughout the entire playoffs as long as they are in contention. The Boston Celtics... At 57 and 25, one game less, finish in second place. Those two teams will wait out the play in tournament games, which we have at seven the Miami Heat hosting the number eight seed, the Atlanta Hawks, while the Toronto Raptors host the Chicago Bulls at the 9 10 seeds in the Eastern Conference. While in the Eastern Conference, the only the only matchups that are set are the Brooklyn Nets playing Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers and the Cleveland Cavaliers playing the New York Knicks. In the Western Conference, at the one seed at 53-29, the Denver Nuggets. They will await the matchup as well as the Memphis Grizzlies at 51-31. Both of those teams will respectfully wait for the um, the playing tournament games to finish as a to see who their opponents are come next by next weekend. Um, and the only matchups that are set in the Western Conference are the number three seeded Sacramento Kings against the defending champion Golden State Warriors at number six, and then. At the number four or five seed, we have the Phoenix Suns against the Los Angeles Clippers. And then in the play-in tournament games, we have LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers playing Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, and the Minnesota Timberwolves in the 7-8 slot. While at the 9-10 slot, we have the New Orleans Pelicans hosting the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, so people, if they're not particularly known or not understanding of how this format is, the winner of the 9-10 seed has to win two games. So the 9-10 seed have to win two games to get the 8 seed. And the winner of the 7-8 seed automatically gets the 7th seed. Um, and the, the loser of the 9-10 seed is already eliminated while the winner has to play the the loser of the 7-8 game for the final the, the third and final playing game on each side of the conference. And I know it's still too early um to give our takes about who each team is going to play, but I can however give a prediction on who wins each of the seedings and why. Um so I'm going to start in the Eastern Conference. Between Philadelphia and Brooklyn, uh, I could see Brooklyn maybe winning one game, but I think Joel Embiid's just going to be too much for the, for Brooklyn to try and handle. Um, Brooklyn did all they could to handle the the drama and all the, 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 the crazy changes they had to deal with throughout, during out the season. They fired Steve Nash the first six, seven games into the season. Jacques Vaughn took over, I thought did an outstanding job. They trade KD and Kyrie right at the trade deadline. And they turn Mikel Bridges in what he could be a potentially an all-star starter by next season. So, but I think Brooklyn, Brooklyn has to obviously play it out because they had the they have the draft picks to give to Houston as part of the James Harden trade that they made last season. Um, or the season prior, excuse me, in 2020-2021. That was when James Harden got out of Brook of Houston to go to Brooklyn. 
And then, as we know, last year he got out of Brooklyn to go to Philadelphia last year. Um, so Brooklyn kind of had to play it out. They were kind of in a no-win situation. But I'm going to take Philadelphia comfortably in five games. Um, plus, I also believe Joel Embiid is the uh, the winner of the 2023 uh, Kia NBA's MVP award winner. Uh, the next seeding games, we have Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers going up against Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, and the New York Knicks. Quite a turnaround for both these teams. The Knicks, who finished 11th in the Eastern Conference last year, you see the dramatic change that the New York Knicks had offensively. It left Julius Randle being the primary scorer for the team, while Julius Jalen Brunson became the primary ball handler to help their offense. Um, and they also made a trade to get J Josh Hart, who is a very versatile wing defender who can guard all the positions. He can rebound. He can shoot. Very, very important, vital player to this New York Knicks team. I think he could be the X factor for the Knicks, while the X factor, I believe, for the Cavaliers could be one of the bench players, and I think it's going to be Karis LeVert. Um... I personally have this game, this game slash series of these two great young teams going seven full games. And I'm going to take the Cavs in seven. It's going to be really, really close in all the games. Um, this might be one of those series where I could see the home team winning all games. And of course, the Cavaliers have the uh, home court advantage in the first round. And it's going to be probably a little bit tougher for the Knicks through the first two games because of the injury to Julius Randle we had a couple weeks ago. He suffered an ankle sprain. Could potentially be out the first two games of that series. But time will tell. All right. Now, the, as for the playing games. We have Atlanta and Miami. These two teams played off in the Eastern Conference first round series last season. Where, obviously... Miami took care of their job as the number one seed. They manhandled Atlanta easily in five games. Um, I don't see anything changing. I think Miami's going to lock in. They're a different team in the playoffs. We've seen what Jimmy, we saw what Jimmy Butler did last season. Basically carried the, the Miami Heat all the way to seven games in the conference finals, albeit losing to the Boston Celtics. I don't see this changing. I got Miami winning the playing game and they will be playing the Boston Celtics in a in another playoff rematch, except instead of it being in the conference finals, it will be in the first round series. And then Atlanta would host the winner of the 9-10 game between Toronto and Chicago. Um, Chicago kind of did better down the stretch, but I personally like the trade that the Raptors made to get Jakob Pertl. Um... I think Jakob Pertl kind of helped them solidify a center because they didn't really have a definitive center. Um, they were kind of playing a, a combination of Pascal Siakam and Chris Boucher. Uh, and they, they had they had just a, a combination of different big men playing the position. Pascal Siakam, I know, is a forward, but they had him playing the center position. And it was kind of hard for Siakam to not only be the center, but he also had to be the facilitator and the highest scoring player on the team. Toronto had a drastic drop-off, a seven-game difference after last season. They finished 48-34, and and they were only a couple games behind Philadelphia. They gave Philadelphia a great series in the first round last year, albeit losing in six games. Um, I see this being potentially the Raptors winning, and they will play the Atlanta Hawks in the second game for their second game, but the third and final game of the play-in out of the East. Now, from the Western Conference. The Los Angeles Lakers hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. Minnesota had a crazy final day of the regular season. It involved Rudy Gobert punching his teammate Kyle Anderson in, in what was a pretty, uh, a pretty hefty verbal altercation. Um, got sent home right after that. And then Jaden McDaniels fractured his hand after he punched a, appeared to have punched a wall. Don't know if that's the smartest thing to do. Um, obviously, you can't 
You can't let your frustration get the best of you, especially on the last day of the regular season. I know a lot was at stake for them, but it seemed like they were probably locked into the play-in anyways. But having to avoid Oklahoma City but playing L.A., I don't know if that will do Minnesota any favors. But I'm personally going to take the Lakers. I think the Lakers are locked in. LeBron's been locked in since basically since he got back from his injury. I think, the, and Anthony Davis is without question playing the best basketball of his career. Um, would have been an all-star this year, in my opinion, had he had been healthy. But I think if the Lakers had a fully healthy team and they made all those trades, I think there could be an argument that the Lakers could have potentially been closer to the one seed and having home court in the first at least two rounds rather than playing in the play-in tournament. But that was then, this is now. But I'm still going to take the Los Angeles Lakers. I think home court's going to really help the Lakers in this one. And the, if they win, the winner of the LA-Minnesota game will get the Memphis Grizzlies in the first round. Memphis kind of being in the same position they were in last season. They were the two seed yet again this year after they were the number two seed last season. And Memphis had a crazy month of March where they had the injury to Brandon Clark, then Dylan Brooks got suspended twice because of being over the limit on technical fouls. John Morant had the incident with the gun on the IG live stream. And it kind of seemed like when it rained, it poured. But I think Memphis is going to have their work cut out for them. They were the hunters hunting the hunted. And now they are the hunted being hunted by the hunters. But time will tell. And then in... The 9-10 game, New Orleans and Oklahoma City. I think Oklahoma City, even though as talented and as good as they are, who, I will tell you what, who, they get Chet Holmgren back next year, who did not play at all this year. If they could get Chet Holmgren to add a couple more pounds, maybe get over 200 pounds, and the way they played this year, their highest at the ceiling for next season could potentially be the second round. But time will tell. But as far as this playing game between the Oklahoma City Thunder going at New Orleans, I'm going to take the New Orleans Pelicans. I think Brandon Ingram has been on fire as far as offensive scoring. Um, I think C.J. McCollum is going to help them um, kind of weather the storm. He's the veteran of the locker room. I like Jonas Valanciunas in this in this matchup. Jonas, Valanci Jonas Valanciunas is going to be very, very vital as far as his rebounding goes. Um, but I'll tell you what, though. Oklahoma City's got a lot to look forward to. They should not hang their heads if they lose. Um, a team that finished 42-40, and 40, or excuse me, 40-42, and 42, actually reversed the record, win losses. 40-42, and 42, a team that, was projected to be a lottery team this year as far as not even being involved in the playoffs slash play in anyways. Um, Oklahoma City's got a bright future. They get another couple dra draft picks, maybe trade the draft picks for, for some good pl uh, veteran players. I think Oklahoma City's ceiling could be at the highest as the second round for next season. But I'm going to take the Pelicans in the 9-10 game. And... Then I have the Lakers winning the 7-8 game. So it would set up New Orleans and Minnesota in the second game or in the third and final game of the Western Conference playing set. As far as the matchups, the first, the first um, matchup in the Western Conference that is eligible is the 3 versus the 6. Sacramento Kings being new to this, this thing called the playoffs. This is the first time that they have been in the playoffs. And the first time I think they've been in the playoffs since the 2002-2003 season. And they haven't been in it in a long time. George W. Bush, I think, was the president. If not, it was George H. W. Bush was the last president um, since the Sacramento Kings were in the playoffs. Uh, LeBron James was the number one draft pick that year. So it has been a long time coming for the Sacramento Kings. But I think if they would have played the Clippers, I think they would have took the Clippers easily. I think they would have, if they had played the LA Clippers, I think they would have beat them in, in five, if not six games. No disrespect to the Clippers, but it's also because of the un, 
certainty of Paul George's health. Um, but I think this series could go either way. I don't have a coin on me. I personally think it's a coin flip because they get the defending champions from last season, the Golden State Warriors. And this is the dream perfect matchup for both these teams. Less travel. Both the teams could choose to go on a bus ride. It's only a 45, if not an hour drive down the street from one another from, from uh, San Francisco to Sacramento. It's not that far. Um, but, you know, it's... I think this is the most intriguing matchup from the Western Conference. I think this could be the best matchup out of the entire playoffs in the first round. I still also think the Cavs and the Knicks from the Eastern Conference is the best one overall. But I like Sacramento-Golden State. This series could go either way. Sacramento, having played the Warriors, obviously, in their division. Golden State winning three out of four with Sacramento resting its starters on Friday night. So Sacramento had nothing to play for. They were locked in at the three seed. Um, It really could go either way. And we've seen Golden State do this time and time again. All they need is one game. They don't need to win two, two, three games on the road. If they get one game on the road, we've seen what the the the, the home versus road um, disparage has been for Golden State this season. Um, kind of shocking. Golden State was thirty three and eight at home, which is the third best record in the Western Conference amongst home teams, and it was. The, it was the third best overall in both the Western Conference and in the NBA defending their home court with the only two teams uh, two teams having better home records. The Memphis Grizzlies at 35-6 and six had the best home record overall in all of the association, while the Denver Nuggets had a 34-7 record at home. Um... But Sacramento could play well at, at both home and on the road. Even though they were 23 and 18 at home, this team still went 25 and 16 on the road. Um, but Golden State went 33 and 8 at home this year, and they went 11 and 30 on the road this year. That, I think, is going to be a glaring issue for the Warriors. They have not been a very good road team this year. Um, but again, We've seen their blueprint for success. They don't need to win two, three games on the road. All they need is one game on the road, and it feels like they've already won the series. We saw what they did last year against, against Memphis. They took one game. They took the first game in Memphis, and that was all they needed. They ended up winning all three of their home games. They went 11-1 last year, did the Golden State Warriors, on their home court in the playoffs having only lost game one of the finals last year against the Boston Celtics. So with that being said, I think this is going to be a really good playoff series. It really could go either way. Um, I think though when they're fully healthy, I think the Sacramento Kings overall look a lot better. I'm going to take the Kings in seven. I think it's going to be a very close series. I think... I think the home team, it's it's very similar to the Cavaliers-Knicks series. I think the home team wins all the seven games. Um, but obviously with Sacramento having home court advantage, I think the Kings take the series um, in seven games. But it's going to be very, very close. But again, I would not be surprised if the Warriors end up pulling it out. So with respect, all due respect for what the Warriors have accomplished in their their dynasty run, so to speak. All right, and the next series, the four-seeded Phoenix Suns. They have had a roller coaster. You talk about an up and down, up and down season for the Phoenix Suns. They looked like they were getting back to their winning ways in the beginning of the season. They were, the, they were tied with New Orleans at the one seed through the first two months of the season, first month and a half per se, and... Then the wheels came off. They had they had drama in the locker room. The new ownership took over after Robert Sarver was forced to sell the team after he had been having after he had had allegations um, hosted against him 
in the beginning of the season, going actually addressing in that was addressed in the off season actually before the season the regular season had even started. Um, but the Phoenix Suns made the trade, the Golden State Warriors trade, or not the Golden State Warriors trade. I'm sorry, the trade that acquired Kevin Durant without question saved their season. Yes, it costed Phoenix a lot. It costed them Mikel Bridges, Cam Johnson, two very important young players that Phoenix had on their championship two years ago. And you look at, when you could get Kevin Durant and give up those two guys, and even th the, the the Nets threw TJ Warren in to, as a like, compensation, because I think the, 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 the Suns had to give up at least two, if not three draft picks. I don't remember. So can't, you can't quote me on it. I don't know. But then there come the LA Clippers. And it seems like I felt the Clippers, again, were very disappointing. I had the Clippers actually with the Denver Nuggets in the beginning of the season at the top two seeds. They were either going to be the one or the two seed in my book. They were getting Kawhi Leonard back. They were getting everybody fully healthy. And it just seemed like something just didn't click. Kawhi, for some reason, wasn't healthy in the beginning. But now that he's healthy, he's looked phenomenal. He was on an unbelievable tear after the All-Star break. And I don't know. I, I still don't know what to make of this Clippers team. Um, they brought in Mason Plumley, Bones Highland. Eric Gordon, and the biggest one they got from a buyout was Russell Westbrook, who was with the Lakers, and then the Lakers made all those trades to save their season. Um, This is going to be an interesting series, but I don't think the Clippers have anybody to guard Kevin Durant. And I think it's going to be too much KD, Booker, CP3, and DeAndre Ayton. I think that's the best starting five out of the entire out of the entire association no disrespect to golden state no disrespect to denver or memphis or milwaukee but i think as far as the elite caliber player in that lineup as far as the the, the veterans of kd and and kd and cp3 and the two young bucks in devin booker and deandre ayton I think it's a mixture of veterans with young, talented players. And it's I feel like the series, again, it's kind of going to come down to whether Paul George is going to be eligible to play. If Paul George has to miss the first three games of the series, I'm going to say it's a toss-up. But if Phoenix, as well as they have looked, and they haven't lost a game since Kevin Durant's in their lineup, when KD is in the lineup, they're 8-0. It's going to be tar it's really, really tough, really hard to guard Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. Um, but I'm going to take the Suns in six. And it, it's a tough series. But, I mean, there's there's talent all over the board. And, and, and LA has Kawhi, Paul George, Russell Westbrook. They, they have a plethora of good young players, too. Um... But I, I just think overall on certain matchups, I actually am going to give the Clippers bench the higher advantage over the Suns bench. But the Suns just have better starters. So still tough to say. But then we have to wait out the one twos playing. Um, the one and twos having to wait out the playing games. But if I'm going to make my picks, I think it's going to be in the Eastern Conference. I think Miami will play... Boston at the two seven seeds. And then I think um I think Toronto is actually gonna I'm actually gonna pick Toronto to play Milwaukee. But again, Toronto and Atlanta, I think, is a coin flip. I think either one of those teams can win that playing game. But I'm gonna go with Toronto in an upset if Toronto wins. If Chicago wins and Chicago plays Atlanta, I'm gonna take Atlanta. Um but I'm gonna take. I'm gonna think the Raptors and the Bucks play in the first round at the one eight, and then obviously I think Milwaukee's just gonna run Toronto out of the gym. 
Um, and then in the West, I think Denver's going to end up playing. This is a hot take. I think Denver's going to play the New Orleans Pelicans. I think even though Zion Williamson will not be back by the playing games, if Zion Williamson comes back for the first round matchups, it's going to be a really tough series between these two teams. Um, I don't think Denver's going to be given a cakewalk, a cakewalk by the Pelicans if Zion Williamson is healthy. But if Zion Williamson's out, then I'm, I'm going to take Denver in a sweep, maybe in five games. But again, still too early to tell. Time will tell, but we'll see. All right. Next series would then be the Memphis Grizzlies playing the LA Lakers, because that's who I think they will play. Um, Shannon Sharp might show up at every one of those games, the home games at least for the Lakers. Um, but I I don't know. I, if I was Memphis, I would not want to play the LA Lakers. I'm just going to throw that out there. I think the Lakers are the best team in the play-in. Of all the teams that are in the play-in tournament games, I think the Lakers are the most dangerous. And... I mean, when you got healthy LeBron, healthy KD, uh, healthy LeBron and AD, with all those pieces that they added, D'Lo, Vanderbilt, um, Austin Reeves has been playing out of his mind this year. Um, Malik Beasley, another player they brought over from the trades. I think those guys saved their season. Um, I would still say this series is going to be close, but... Home team won all the games. I'm actually thinking this could be an upset. I want to take the Lakers. I really do. But I think Memphis is locked in. I'm going to take Memphis in seven, if not six. I got the Grizzlies in six or seven, but it's going to be close. Time, time will tell. So, But with that being said, that wraps up the... Playoff bracket, um, I will also probably throw the bracket down in the description or maybe in the comment section. I'll pin it uh, so you guys see what the matchups are. Um, but let me know what you guys think about the bracket. Let me know what you guys think about your picks in the comment section. And let me know who you root, who you all are rooting for in the playoffs. But until that time, this is me signing out, and I will catch you all in the next video. Have a good one, everybody, and happy Easter. Peace.